lighting. I like this. So, um, yeah, I'm in my hotel here in uh, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. I'm covering Mustang Week. Well, I'm not really covering Mustang Week. I'm only out here to shoot features for Muscle Mustangs and Fast Forwards. But, uh, yeah, I was just noticing the color and the lighting and all these people, these professional YouTubers are out in Hawaii right now and they're shooting terrible videos um, in their hotel rooms. And I just think it's hysterical that these are the people that are online instructing people and telling people how to do videos and photos and they can't even light their own videos when they're in a hotel room. It's like, come on, man. It's like, get a lamp, turn on a lamp behind you, sit close to the light, open a window, whatever. You know, it, just use some common sense. I, I don't think a lot of these guys really know what they're doing. But uh, anyway, uh, this is my first Mustang week, so it was interesting, um, to say the least. I'm used to more of a race scene environment where it's, you know, really crazy fast cars. Uh, at least that's what I've grown accustomed to now. I've, I've been to many, many car shows in the past when I was working for Mopar Muscle and High Performance Pontiac, and most of those shows didn't have any sort of, uh, you know, racing involved with them, except for maybe Mopars at the Strip and a couple of other events I did where we actually went out to the drag strip, but uh, it's, it's a different scene. It's, it's, a, it's a scene of cars that are way nicer uh, than I'm used to seeing at the drag strip. Um, but I guess a trade-off to that is that these cars aren't as fast, so it's kind of difficult to find a really nice car that's fast and unique. Um, at the drag strip, it's pretty easy to find a unique car that's fast, but they're usually pretty ugly. So it's just, it's just a different challenge, and I'm sure that if I uh, spent more time at events like this, I'd be able to kind of, you know, pick them out of the crowd really quickly. But um, that said, I should be able to leave here with, uh, I think, seven, possibly eight features. I have seven already booked right now. Um, I think I've shot five or something like that. I can't, I don't know. But uh, I, I'm, I'm happy with what I've gotten. I'm looking forward to getting home because <laughs> it's been it's been a long month of being away from home but uh you know i love working i love doing what i do and um i couldn't be happier i'm very thankful for henry de los santos the editor of muscle mustangs he actually invited me out to this thing and said hey you know i'd love to get you out there and i looked at my schedule and it was like so compressed it's just i i think i got back from a trip last week and then I'm leaving again, and then I come home, and I leave again, and I leave again. It's like, it's a lot of traveling, but it's it's what I signed up for, you know. So if, if I'm if I'm out traveling and I'm working, it means I'm making money. And if I'm at home and I'm not traveling, probably not making money. Um, although I am doing a lot more local stuff than I used to do as far as, uh, you know, real estate and uh, weddings and that kind of stuff. But um, no automotive at home. I don't do any automotive photography in Florida for the most part. I'm almost exclusively traveling to do all that right now, uh, so that's kind of a bummer. But you know, it is what it is. I, I'm thankful for the opportunities because I, I know what it was like when I didn't have this going on, and it was not cool. It was not fun, and uh, this is definitely a better way to way to be. Um, so I leave Sunday, and um, I get home, and I'm probably leaving town again. I guess for Indy. Uh, for the NMCA finals, and then the week after that is the NMRA finals. So uh, two big races back to back. Uh, I'm very very excited to to cover those. Um, that's my bread and butter right now. Is the NMRA and MCA? That's they're my people. So um, I work for them. I do everything I can for them, and I love the guys and the team that I work with. So. Um, looking forward to that, and I'm going to be doing a lot of photography at the end of this month because of those two races, so look out for that. Um, but I guess that that's basically it with the update. I do kind of want to talk about Canon's new mirrorless camera. Um, I have a lot of friends of mine who give me a hard time because I shoot Canon, um, and it is what it is. I have no intentions of switching. I'm very invested in this ecosystem. I'm very happy with what I get with what I have. There's no reason for me to upgrade. So there's, you know, it's kind of like a, a moot point for me right now to even talk about this. But uh, it does have me excited because it's, it's Canon finally establishing itself with a full frame mirrorless camera. They've got a new lens mount, which is fully adaptable to the lenses that I currently use. So 
that's a that's a bonus. Uh, people were wanting it to be native, and I don't see how that was even possible. Um, there were some rumors going around about having like a, this weird adjustable mount where the sensor would move and stuff. It was all it was all bullshit. Um, none of it was true. Uh, but they had this really cool adapter solution where if you adapt the lens, you get for a hundred bucks, you get like a normal adapter, and then all my lenses work on it. Or you spend two hundred dollars and you get an adapter with a built-in ring. It's called a uh, uh, oh, what is it called? I don't know. But it adds like an, an additional function. It might be, even be called the function ring. But um, that function ring adds uh, a new feature to the lens where you can either assign ISO, shutter speed, aperture, various things to it. So while you're shooting, you can just you know click a little ring on on the lens and adjust that on the fly. I think that's pretty cool. It's actually genius because no one has made an adapter yet it is anything other than an adapter. So Canon really was like, well, we're not going to make an adapter without like maybe including new features. So that was that was pretty cool to, to see that. And they have like a really super cheap, like I said, $100 adapter. That's awesome. Um, and I've also heard rumors that's shipping with the camera. So hopefully that's true. Um, but the new lenses they have coming out with that look pretty sweet. And uh, the, oh yeah, there's another adapter that has a built-in adjustable variable ND and a polarizer. So you can either choose one or the other or you can buy it and buy the inserts for that. So that's really cool for, they, they pointed out a really good, uh, you know, uh, situation where you might want to use that. And it's like the, I think it's called the Canon 11 to 24 F4 lens that has a, uh, a bulbous, a bulbous front element. There's no possible way to uh, attach a standard circular filter to that. So you have to use this funky filter system and uh, this will end that. So if you want to polarize that lens, you now can do it. And that's pretty sweet. So I think that'll be a pretty big hit. I know um, my buddy Brendan Vanson, the travel photographer, he's, uh, I think he's already going to pre-order his because he's very excited about that that adapter with the built-in NDs, and I knew he would be. As soon as I saw that, I was like, oh, man, Brendan and um, and even Thomas Heaton, those two guys will probably really like that. But uh, it's not all great. The camera has a lot of features missing. Um, I was hoping to upgrade, or not upgrade, I was hoping to transition to the, the mirrorless system entirely over the few, next few years. Um, I knew it was coming, and uh, I my... My mentality was, okay, I'll just sell the 5D4 and I'll get that mirrorless version. Well, this is apparently the 5D4 equivalent, or price-wise, it's really not the equivalent to the 5D4, uh, but it does have the same sensor. But it doesn't have dual card slots, which is a bummer for me. Um, and it's autofocus tracking, uh, continuous autofocus tracking shooting speed is 5 frames a second. And that is just unacceptable for me. So it kind of threw that out the window of, of making it my new primary camera. Um, I still have the 1DX Mark II, and that's been, you know, the, the sports camera, the, uh, the do-it-all workhorse. But, uh, yeah, I was really hoping to upgrade the 5D4. It doesn't look like that's going to happen. I might end up picking this up later in the year maybe, maybe renting it um, just to try it out and use it for travel photography. But um, as a professional camera, I don't think it's really ready for that. Um, that's, that's not just the dual cards and the autofocus. It's just a lot of things about the camera don't seem uh, ideal for me until I get my hands on it and actually try it out. So, uh, But yeah, that's, that's really it. Um, my friends who are Sony shooters can revel in the fact that their cameras are still superior on paper <laughs> to uh, all the Canon stuff and the Nikon stuff. So uh, the war continues, and this battle, I guess, has been lost. Um, but, you know, it's going to be a great camera. It's just not its not going to be uh, matured like the Sony system has right now. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so that's it. Look for more content in the coming weeks. And, uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in. This is shot on, because someone's going to ask me, shot on the EOS M50 mirrorless camera with the 22mm f2 prime. And uh, I love it. So kudos to Canon for making this camera so good and so cheap. It's like 650 bucks. Gotta love it. All right. Thanks. See ya.